Hello everyone and welcome back to Just Finish Coding. This is part 2 of our 2 player tic tac toe game which we're making on Python. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Just finished coding. Now I have to interject here that if you've not watched part 1, please watch it before you come here because as you can see I'm picking up from where I left off and for this video to make sense you need to watch the previous one. I will leave a card for you right here, please watch the video and then come right back. If you're still here I'm going to assume that you've watched part 1, in which case let's continue with our code. So the first thing I'm going to do is to go down and right before you know we start to set up our square group and the squares list, I will set up something which I'm going to call board. And this is basically going to store what each square of the board contains as its content attribute. So I'll be having um, nine, uh, you know, I'll be having nine different squares. But since I'm going to start, you know, the square numbering with one, I'll make sure there are 10. So instead of just typing in, you know, 10 uh, open and close brackets, what we can do is uh, type it this way with a shortcut. So you can just type in, uh, not brackets, open and close quotes. So this followed by a for uh, i in range, for i in uh, range um, 10. Okay? And what this means is for i in range 0, 10. And this means that there will be um, i's from 0 till 9. Okay, 9 included and in this case 10 is not going to be included. So we'll be having uh, 10 of these within our board list. But we won't be considering the first one because it's, um, you know, item the index of that particular uh, open and close uh, open and close uh, strings open and close quotes is going to be zero so we won't consider that at all okay so what's important is that you have this set up and now you can start to scroll up and create the second method within the uh, create the third method within this particular uh, sprite so you can call this def clicked and that's what i'm going to call it sounds uh, it sounds pretty much like what it's intended to do. So to use this, we first need to use a variable called turn. So I'm going to say global turn. And I know we don't have turn set up yet. So what I will do is scroll down and set the turn variable probably right after we set up our board. So I'll see turn is equal to x just like this. And your error should disappear here. So global turn. And uh, after this, what I'll do is I'll first check if self.content is equal to um, just uh, nothing, just open and close quotes. And basically this method is going to execute, no, not, not equals to, equal equals to. So basically this method is going to execute when we click on a particular square. And I only want the square to change its image in case, you know, it's vacant and someone hasn't already clicked on it. So for example, if I choose the square in the center of the board, uh, and the next person tries to choose that same square again, I wouldn't want any output and this if statement just makes sure that there is no output. So next we can start to see if the x and y, um, x and y position actually was within the particular um, image. And to do that we need to enter in the x and y uh, values into this particular method. So what I will do is set up two, um, two uh, arguments. So I'll first have x val and then I will have a y val. So first I'm going to say if, um, with not first, but within this if statement, I'll say if self.rect dot collide point. And here I could just type in x val and y val. And this is just going to tell me it's going to return true or false, or it's going to return true in case, uh, in case these two values, in, in case these two values were within the particular square, and it's going to return false in case these two uh, values weren't within the particular square. Right, but you know, since this image is a square, it really doesn't matter. So after this, we can get into the next part. And here I'll set self.content to be equal to turn. Because think about it, if it's the X player's turn, and then the X player has clicked on that square, then we'd want the square to have X inside it in the form of its content variable. Next, what we can do is also make sure that the board list is updated to make sure that this particular item of the board list is set correctly. So what we can do is just say board um, within and then within square brackets self dot number is um, equal to um, whatever the you know is equal to whatever the turn is. So if it's the X player's turn, 
it's going to be X and if it's the O player's turn, it's going to be O. Alright, so after we're done with this, we can start to have two different conditions. So the first case is if turn is equal equal to X and the second case is if it's not equal to X and it's equal to O. So in this case, if it is an X, I will say self dot image is equal to X underscore image and I will also need to resize the image. So I will say self dot image is equal to self dot image, um, do, um, not self dot image, but p dot transform dot scale. And then within brackets, I'll have self dot image. Um, no, not this way. So self dot image. And then I'll follow this up with an open, uh, open and close brackets with the particular scaled value. So in this case, it's just gonna be my self dot width and my self dot height, self dot height. And then I will close the brackets once again. Okay, so there we go. We just have those two lines set up. And next I'll switch, uh, I'll switch the turn. So in this case, I'll set turn to O and um, that is going to be pretty much all we need to do right now. So next we can just fill in the same things which happen in case it's the O player's turn. So I'm going to copy all this and um, then I'm going to paste uh, paste this within the um, within the else argument. So first I'm going to change this to O image. Then I'm going to change, yeah, I can actually leave the second line of code as it is. But the third line of code, obviously I need to change the turn to X. And that should be pretty much all you need to have within your clicked method. So now I can scroll down to your main method. And within this you need, uh, not main method, but your main loop. And within this, you need to find some sort of way to make sure that when we click on the square, um, we get into that particular squares clicked method. So in order to do all the stuff that I just mentioned, we can get into this uh, events. Okay, so uh, we'll have another event checker. So we'll say if event dot type is um, equal equal to, and here we need to see if the mouse is clicked on the screen. So you can say p dot mouse button down. Um, in this case, I'll have um, MX and MY as a mouse X and Y coordinates. So we can say this is equal to P dot mouse uh, dot get pause. And this is going to get the two coordinates which we need. And after this, I will go through each one of the squares in the squares list. So I'm going to say for S in squares, and we will just uh, say S dot clicked. And this will just make sure that all the squares have that uh, are checking that uh, their method for the MX and MY positions. And in case, uh, you know, the click happened to be within one of those squares, that method would execute. And that should be pretty much it. So I'm gonna save my code and then run it. And as far as I know, we shouldn't have any errors. So as you can see, we can enter stuff pretty easily. And while we still do not have a complete, you know, complete tic-tac-toe game, we can't uh, win, uh, the other guy can't win either, and then, there's no check for a tie game. We still have made quite a bit of progress and I will try my best to finish um, all the remaining code in either the next video or the next two videos, depending on how it goes. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.